Good afternoon, Nigeria. And wherever you may be joining me this afternoon, all over the world, depending on your location. And to those who will be watching this live chat with Para all over the world later on, I am super, super excited to have on this live show today the world's first human being conceived through IVF, in vitro vitalization. My name is Princess Dayo Dukoya, the visionary of Para Family Foundation, an NGO incorporated to support with the vision of supporting families facing fertility challenges. We support this family through enlightenment programs, seminars and counseling in order to eradicate the ignorance and misguided myths surrounding infertility and the, stigma, and the social stigma associated with delayed conception in our society. The story behind IVF can never be completed and behind the story behind the breakthrough of IVF too can never be completed without mentioning this special guest on this show today. And you will agree with me that this breakthrough has brought liberation to so many families undergoing these challenges. The, my guest today, Abat was brought, brought medical solutions to the challenges of infertility that are facing couples all over the world. Hosting the live chat with me today is Louis Joy Brown, who is the first woman being conceived and birthed through IVF. Louis Brown will also be speaking at the forthcoming Parafertility Conference on the 26th of June, 2021, in Lagos, Nigeria, alongside fertility expert and other seasoned facilitators. Made welcome with me this afternoon, Louise Joy Brown, the first IVF baby. Hi, Louise. Welcome on the show. I can't hear anything. You can't hear? I can hear you, Louise. Oh, you already just said. Picture is there, but there's no sound. I will be asking you some Pictures questions this afternoon. Dare you, but there's no sound. <laughs> okay. So, um, so quickly we'll just show some pictures of. Everyone can see and hear you, but I can As we come back on the show. Yeah, the volume's up because I can hear them really were clear just now. And it says you're in the show, so I'm not yeah. sure. Can you hear me now, Luis? You are muted. Can you hear me now? Now it's clear, but yeah, the host has can. muted your mic. Yeah, the host. Can you hear me now? Yes, the host is on. I can't hear anything though. This is what can you hear me now? <laughs> and the trouble is, I'm not going to let me. So Hi, can you hear me? Can you hear me? No. They muted it though. But there's no sign at all. I can't even, that's what it said. I can't hear her. Did that just shut the shutter or something? But if there's the mic's open, there's nothing. Well, you can hear that there's nothing. She's chatting away to me, but I can't. <laughs> okay, I'll be back. Oh, she's 
she's gone. Are you? I'm in the show. Everyone can see and hear you. It's only me on there, but I can't. Oh, you can't do her. She's gone. I'm the only one there at the minute. <laughs> do you feel like you've been abandoned? <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind. Get me air right. Considering I haven't done my air or makeup for like nearly a year. Mm. I was like, how do I do it? What have I got to do? <laughs> I do you hear me I, now. I can hear you now, yes. Okay, fine. <laughs> I guess it was the video that we introduced into the uh into the show. So quickly, um, my guest is here. Nice to have you, Louise. Uh it's been over 40 years that you have um been born and um, you have kids, you have families, and there are a lot of myths that are still surrounding IVF. So I'll just be taking you through some questions. And the first one is, can we meet you? Who is Louise Brown? I was born up in Oldham nearly 43 years ago. Um, I was born to Leslie and John Brown. My mum, Leslie, had been trying for nearly 10 years um, to get pregnant and was introduced to Patrick Steptoe um, through her um, GP. And she went up and had a meeting, her and my dad went up to have a meeting with Patrick and accepted her onto the experimental procedure. And nine months later, she was pregnant um didn't know that it hadn't worked before um but to tell you the truth i think they probably told mum she just didn't take it in i think the fact that she was just pregnant after so long um anything else they told her just sort of went straight over her head <laughs> um and then nine months later i was born wow <laughs> That was fantastic. That was a breakthrough indeed uh, to fertility challenges. I've, I've read your books and I'm going to be introducing the book to other people to buy and read so that we know what you know your parents went through and all of that. But quickly, I want to ask, how does it feel to be the first IVF baby all over the world? Um, it, when I was growing up, it felt a bit strange. Um, to know that somebody the other side of the world knew all about me, but I didn't know anything about them. Um, now I feel proud that I'm the first. Um, and the reason I do all these interviews and things is to keep mum and dad's name, name alive. And also what Patrick and Bob Edwards and Jean Purdy went through to get where we are today. That's that's really interesting. Um, so, in terms of your growing up, did you see and did you feel like you felt different from any other child? Um, no. Um, I went to school with all my friends. Um, I actually went through all my schooling with the same group of people. So, and um, I wasn't treated any different to the way my friends were treated. The only thing that was different was the way I was conceived. And, okay. And born because mum had to have a C section, whereas a lot of my friends were born naturally. Naturally. Okay. Okay. So, on a lighter mood as well, how normal is your life compared to others? I mean, you were conceived to IVF, your others, you know, people around you were conceived naturally. How, how normal is your life compared to them? Is anything different from your life while growing up? The only difference is the fact that when we can and when I'm able to, I fly around the world giving conferences to IVF people. Um, apart from that, my life is as normal as yours or anybody else's. Um, I've got a family, um, they go to school, my husband works. Um, 
it's just a normal life and it's life. just the job I do. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I can testify to that because I I, I had an IVF baby. I I waited for eight years and um, I had to go through IVF as well. And my baby is uh, 14, I mean, 13 years old and nothing different, you know. So yeah. you are quite right uh, uh, on that. So um, growing up, did you experience any form of discrimination as a result of your unique birth? I, I guess you mentioned that before, but I just wanted you to talk a bit about it. Is there any discrimination at all while growing up? No, um, I've never had anybody come up to me and say anything horrible or nasty. Um, Mum and Dad received a couple of things when I was born. Um, it wasn't nasty as such, it was sort of weird. Um, they had a test tube come in the post and it had a fetus in and it had like a red ink, which I think should have been like fake blood. And it just said that they were coming to get mum and me. Um, but that was when I was born and um, mum didn't go out alone. Well, she couldn't go out alone because of the amount of press that was outside the house all the time. So um, apart from that, not really, no, no discrimination. Nobody's been horrible or anything. Huh. Okay. Is that, can you just share with us after your birth, if there is any at all, any traumatic experience as an IVF baby? Is there any traumatic experience you have? Um, not a traumatic as such. The only thing that scared me when I was five was, um, I was, um, go, my mum was taking me to school. And by the time I was five, I had a younger sister. <laughs> And she was still in a big pram and mum went to walk out of the front door and take me to school. And we, we got boxed in by um, photographers. Okay. And the only thing that we could do was go back in the house. And then um, our back garden at the time backed onto um, our neighbour's back gardens. Mm -hmm. So I um, jumped over the fence at the back and a neighbour took me to school. But that's wow. the only sort of traumatic, that's it, as as bad as it gets. <laughs> wow. So that, that that's the only one you could remember, you know, uh, an experience that is that traumatic yeah. at five years old. Okay, so um, I had to mention, you know, you had a sibling after your birth. So can you tell us how many siblings are? Did they go went through IVF process as well? Um, I've got a younger sister, Natalie. She's four years younger than me. Mm -hmm. um, so she was um, IVF as well, um, okay. but mum had her um, down in Bristol, whereas I was born up in Oldham, because um, by the time um, Natalie came along, along four years later, um, mm -hmm. they'd handed, once the tra they had the treatment up at Bourne Hall, they mm -hmm. then came home and just went through childbirth naturally. Um, oh, okay. And Natalie was born um, naturally. She was nearly actually born nearly in the shower at home. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but she was born through. She was conceived through IVF as well. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, but is it possible for someone that have gone through IVF to have you know conceived naturally? Have you yes. seen? Yes. Yes. Happen? I've got. I've got two sons that I conceived naturally. And my sister has actually got one, two, three, five children. Wow. So my younger sister has got five that have all been produced, um, con conceived naturally as well. Naturally. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So um, talking about your parents when you are growing up, do they treat you differently? Like maybe you have cousins, you have, you know, uh, other friends, kids that come around. Did they ever treat you differently from other kids? No, no. My um, I used to. We used to go away a lot with my um, mum's brother's children as a family. So my auntie and uncle and, and their two boys, um, and we never got treated any differently to anybody. And my friends as well. Growing up, my my parents treated me the same as their parents treated them. 
um, so there was no. There was nothing really different, okay. No. So, um, yes, you are married with children. How many children do you have? And uh, boys. two boys, two boys, yeah. and they were conceived naturally. Yes. Okay, that's that's good. Okay, so what advice would you have for couples that are having fertility issues, especially where they have, you know, in this part of the world? We still have issues with IVF. Some people still see it as chemical baby. You know, when you were holding your your verse, yeah. you know, where the conception took place. Some people still feel, you know, uh, this is a chemical baby. It's not a real baby. So what kind of advice would you have for people that are, you know, that will want to go through IVF or that have issues, challenges, you know, uh, yeah. going through IVF? My my mum always said she would never give up, um, and she used to say say in interviews that um, if somebody would have told her to stand on her head naked in Trafalgar Square and she would get pregnant, she would do it. Wow. Um, now my mum was told everything, whether she took everything in when she was going through the treatment, she was just so desperate for a baby and she never gave up and she mm. believed that it would happen. Mm -hmm. And it did. Um, just don't give up. And just because I was IVF, I my children aren't IVF, so there's no, no problems just because the person's IVF, they've got to have an IVF baby. Um, don't give up and keep going and believe that you're going to get pregnant. Hmm. That is the word. Don't give up and believe that you are going to get pregnant. So I, I take that from you. Um, and that's actually what, you know, the message is out there. Don't give up until you have your baby, uh, no matter what. And IVF, IVF is one of the options of having your baby. Um, thank you for that, uh, Louise. So I want to quickly ask, um, what do you think is responsible for the high cost of fertility treatments? Because this is, you know, around the world is very expensive. People, you know, can't afford it and then a lot of people can't go for it. So what do you think is responsible and what do you think can be done to make it? Oh. You know, um i don't i wouldn't even begin to know how much ivf costs in different around the world in different places i mean obviously in england we have the nhs which you don't always you can't always get treatment on the nhs and they are um not giving as much out to it um oh i just don't know i mean the clinics do what they can to help people, but they've still got to pay for their equipment and the machines they've got now that, I mean, they didn't have machines back, not the machines they've got today um, that, that help. So uh, I'm assuming is the cost of machines and People have got to qualify in that profession as well. So, and obviously they need paying um, to do their job. Um, I've never been asked that question before. <laughs> <laughs> but if you look at it, anything is worth it if it gives you a child. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think that is the spirit. Anything that will give you what you want, you should go for it. And that is what we tell people around here as well, that you just need to find a way out on, um, on how to get the money and go for it. You don't give it. You just have to be at it. OK, thank you, um, Louis. I, I just want to ask you, you, you have been invited to speak at a conference. You know, we were to meet last year. But unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, set in and uh, turned the whole world around. Uh, but I mean, it's just a great pleasure talking to you uh, through this means uh, this afternoon. So you're going to be still speaking at the conference anyway. So what do you think about Para Family Foundation 
and the conference, because I know you must have read something about PARA and then, I mean, the conference as well. So what do you think about it? I think keep up the great work you do. Um, anybody who does IVF across the world in, in the different countries um, to help people realise their dream of having a baby, um, you're all wonderful and keep up the great work um, because it does help and people do appreciate it. Um, <laughs> because it can give them their dream. Hmm. So on this note, thank you, uh, Louise Brown, for having, you know, having you this afternoon. And we do really, you know, look forward to having you at the conference, uh, June 26th. Um, that's just about 30 days, you know, away. And uh, it's a pleasure, you know, having you this afternoon. Thank you. And thank you, Sandra, for making this happen. And I also want to use this opportunity to uh, wish all para children and all the children all over the world happy Children's Day. And we love you and may God keep you and protect you and make you reach your full potentials in life. Uh, on this note, I want to thank everyone that has joined us on this live show with Para this afternoon. And more of this will be coming up soon. See you at the conference and enjoy your day. Bye. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye. Bye. bye.